Hi, you're watching Artist of the Week. My name is Adam, and this is CIDI 99.1 FM. This week's episode is presented to you by ExploreNet. Hi, uh, I'm Almut Ellinghaus. Uh, I'm here on Artist of the Week on Radio CIDI 99.1. I grew up in Germany. Um, I come from a family of musicians, church musicians. Um, they, I grew up with, with music, with dance, in my dad's choir, so very, very artistic upbringing. Um, I studied puppetry in Germany. It was the first course of puppetry in the Western world as a full four-year university-level degree. Um, I had no idea what to do with my life after that. I met Canadian German puppeteer Felix Merbt, uh, who's not alive anymore. Um, he was a lot older than me, but uh, I followed him to Sutton. <laughs> From the big city, I ended up in the middle of nowhere. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very exciting 13 years of collaboration in life and art. He passed away. I felt a need to switch directions um, to a um, calmer lifestyle, I would say, away from theater. And uh, had always, I had always wanted to move my modeling, modeling in, in, in the terms of making, modeling from making masks, working with clay, modeling in clay to move that towards um, making sculpture for outdoors. And so after he passed away in 2002, I started. I first started working with clay in the same way that I used to work when I, work, when I made paper mache masks, um, meaning I took a block of clay and I worked it with my thumbs and fingers until it was what I wanted. So the only way of transferring that into a workable art piece was to make a mold, which I was used to, and to pour in cement, which was an interesting technical challenge doing 3D molds, um, two layer molds of silicone and hard shell. But at some point, the technical challenge became the larger part of the work. Um, and I would always end up with copies of the original. Uh, cement is fragile. I spoke, I remember speaking to an expert and he said, I asked him, so what do you do cement, so cement doesn't break? And he said, well, it's just a matter of time. Every cement will crack or break and it's just how long can you draw that moment out so at some point i decided to i was working at the time work with my now second husband stanley lake the uh, potter musician artist sculptor and i decided to move towards his way of working with clay, which means I work the actual piece in hand-built clay. So no longer a block of clay, now it's a, um, a, a rolled out patty of clay. So now I use, start with a sheet of clay, I build a cylinder and I work that cylinder until it looks like what I want it to look. So from a cylinder, I work a cylinder until it becomes a figure with a head, with a body, the two can be separate, can come back together. Um, so my original work of working with masks and in a theatrical environment is now coming to fruition in my garden where these sculptures end up. They are being fired in a gas-fired kiln, uh, where you can work with lovely color uh, options that, that you can do with actual flame. And um, yeah, so I work, I still do similar work, but the how has changed significantly. 
And can you share everything you do in detail with us? So I, I work as a sculptor in clay to create garden art. I have worked for my present husband, Stanley Lake, in his pottery to, so, to help out with making actual pottery. So I'm, I have learned quite a bit of that craft. Um, I also work as a musician, so I sing. I have my own jazz group um, where Stanley is my sideman. <laughs> Um, with Michael Hines, Stanley Lake, and uh, Claude Prudhomme now on guitar, Michael Hines on keyboards. Um, I'm also part of the Honeycut, Honeysuckle. I'm also part of the Honeysuckle Sisters, which is an Andrew sister style singing group so it's swing music. That's myself, Laura Barr, Geneviève La Pensee, Michael Hines, Stanley Lake, and Kevin Sullivan. Um, we, yeah, uh, I do classical music with my friend from Danem Adel Barsalou. We tackle a uh, classic song, German leader, mainly. <laughs> so yes, music has remained a big part of my life, both classical and, um, and jazz. Uh, Stanley Lake, my husband, organizes the Sutton Jazz Festival. Uh, we do a lot of gigs, uh, private shows. We hope to start working in restaurants again once we're allowed to, and um, and outdoor shows. Yeah, so music. I, I would say my day is really in the early morning. I do the business, uh, then I do go into the studio to do work with clay and then in the evening i practice music and singing what is your art today about in general i what is my art about i think i pursue in my sculpture i pursue i want to find who that person is that is starting to come about in front of me. So basically, when I start with a sheet of clay and I form a head out of it, a hollow head so it can be fired, um, do I cut into it to create eyes? Do I work these so they start looking like eyes? With the first, the, it'll, it'll never be perfect. And within the imperfection lies a character, a person. And my work is to see, to learn to see who this person is, and then to be able to strengthen to bring this person out without losing it to a preconceived idea. Sounds a little abstract, but it basically means I very simply start cutting where the eyes go. I build up a nose, I cut where the mouth is. Now I push these around and it's probably not quite what I expected it to be. So instead of trying to force it into what I think how it should function, I want to be able to look and see what is really happening. And that is very difficult because I have over the years found a way of how I know how the eyes work, how a mouth works, because sculpture is always an interpretation of the actual human form. It was always been interpretation, whether it's abstract or realistic. And so instead of following a path that I have understood and now trying to force 
the corners which don't fit that path into that path. I try to look at, okay, it's not what I thought it would be, but what is it? And how do I get from what it is to something that I like, that works, that is interesting. Yes, so it's learning to see rather than expectate, following an expectation. And that I think is for me the creative process, the paying attention and then learning the craft because every time I have to further my craft because what I thought or how I knew how to do this is now being challenged because the actual result from cutting in and maybe the knife went a bit too far or it pulled the clay in a different direction. So here's the actual result. What do I do with the actual result and how do I deal with this? So it, the challenge is on every level. And that can be highly annoying, um, but also very addictive. Why did you choose this type of art instead of another one? Um, I had 13 very exciting years of exploration in theater with my first husband, which I found hard to beat on my own. For me, the exploration, the possibility of being my own master now is something that I cherish very much. Maybe also because as a woman, that is still a point of an easily questioned point for myself to allow myself to do exactly how I want to do it. Um, I'm hoping that this is different for the next generation, but for me, it is still an issue. So to be able for me to be able to have a room of my own and to be able to close the door and just try it out with all the possibilities of failure that exist as part of the artistic process is a very important one. So I'm enjoying the freedom that comes with that room of my own, as Virginia Woolf says, and the ability to close the door and to futz around endlessly until something comes out of it that I enjoy. And yes, I love, and then comes a comment, you know, it's, but I can close the door to the comment if I want to. And that is, um, that seems to be still very important for me. And so in a context of, in music, it's very different because in music, at least with the people that I work with, there is, especially in jazz, there is a lot of space given to explore yourself, to do, to, um, you're, you're given the space to improvise in music. You don't have to fight for it <laughs> in jazz. <laughs> and within that space, you're basically allowed to just do and where you, where you, go where you want to go. And the other musicians where you support you in this. And so, and I will support them when it's their turn. And this is what makes jazz immensely exciting and interesting for me. And at its best, I think theater should be the same. In reality, it often isn't. And I think I was not able to find that possibility and also the lifestyle of late nights that 
Do you have a favorite failure or an apparent failure that has set you up for later success at some point in your career? Failures, talking about failures. Um, I think as an artist, failure is a daily activity which creates daily frustration, which makes being an artist hard. Um, is there a, there a direct success from a failure? Um, I'm not very good at seeing my own work or perceiving my own work. So I would say for me, it is more in the, the basic, basically the success is that I go back out to the studio and keep trying <laughs> and trying to figure out why when something really works really, really well, why it worked which is absolutely no guarantee that it'll work tomorrow, but it might happen again. That's the most spectacular failures in detail are when, when you work a hollow clay form built from a cylinder and you work it too long manically trying to move it just another little bit to the next corner, there comes a point where it will collapse on you. And that is <laughs> a learning process <laughs> to know when to stop and step back and know that it needs time to reset and retake strength. And the next day you can continue. So clay is a fabulous material in that it is very easy to work, allows you to do a myriad of things, but at the same time, it always needs to be at the right stage of quality. So if it's too dry, it will crack. If it's too wet, it will collapse. If it's too fresh, it will fall apart. If it has set a long time, it'll be good if it's not too dry. So the bigger the sculpture is that I make, the more I have to deal with these very basic elements. Is the structural form that I'm creating dry enough to keep its form, wet enough so I can keep working on it? And does it actually, once I get to the top, am I still happy with the bottom? because every time I add something, it affects the whole. So it's an exciting material that makes a lot of things possible and that very quickly can completely collapse and fall apart. What advice would you give to somebody in the same field as you? What would I adv advise somebody to follow this career path? I think the basic issue is the word career path. For the, the number of artists who manage to make a living with their craft is very small. Will always be. Um, the main part of the job is to sell your work for which most of us are not well suited or even prepared. So there's an inherent struggle. <laughs> um, the artwork itself, I think it is important to learn, learn your craft meet people. I think most artists are very willing to discuss their approach, their search. 
Um, be ready to not succeed in what you thought would happen easily. Um, and don't be afraid if something comes out of it that you didn't expect and don't quite know yet how to manage or what to make of it. Because the what happens in my head will always be different from what comes out of my hands. And what comes out of the hands is the important part. <laughs> so part of it is skill level, but another part is also being able to step back and look at the reality and be willing to engage with reality, which is a nice challenge. It has nothing to do with what the imagination has brought out, but what the imagination can make out of what actually happens. <laughs> so that's a, it's a, it's a beautiful challenge. It's addictive. It's awful. It's exciting. It's fascinating. It's nauseating. It's um, time consuming. It's a lonely profession. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm glad to have that. And when it comes to music, it basically, I would say, it's, it's, it's similar. You learn your instrument, which in my case is a voice. Um, I've started again taking lessons with Eve Goudin Roux in order to push myself into new directions new challenges, rework my craft, my skill, and also be able to offer more to my colleagues with whom I'm spending a fascinating hour of communication, improvising and listening and reacting to one another. It's uh, an incredible experience. So COVID-19 has impacted us naturally quite a bit. Um, when it comes to music, um, our usual restaurant gigs were all canceled. In the last two years, we well, last summer, we had a few private outdoor parties. And uh, Stanley Lake, my husband's jazz festival in Sutton, because they moved it outdoors into a park. And that was a blessing because otherwise there would not have been much. <laughs> um, as for, for my sculpture work, uh, I'm the president of the Tour des Arts which is a studio tour and sale annual now in its, I think, 32nd, 33rd year. Um, in July, this year it'll be from July 16 to July 24. This studio tour is a major point of sale for my work. It had to be canceled in 2020. Fortunately, we were able to have it last year in 2021, and we had a lot of customers. So that was a beautiful experience. For the work itself, I am very fortunate to have the ability to entertain myself for hours on end, days on end, weeks on end, on my own, in either the studio or my music room. <laughs> it's an ability that I've learned over the years because as I said, art is a solitary profession for the most part of it. Um, 
and uh, so it has in that sense it has had less of an impact on me because i'm used to it how do you believe the industry will change and evolve within the upcoming years i believe that art is the soul of a community the artists being the translators the ones who lay themselves bare in order to be able to look at that soul, to portray that soul, to represent that soul. And as a society, we easily take that for granted and disregard its importance to the health of that collective soul. Life is not all reading, writing, arithmetic. I wish mine was more of that in the sense it would maybe improve my ability of making the sales pitch. And I'm learning that. <laughs> but at heart, I am translating, I'm laying myself bare, open to be able to transport that precarious thing. And at the best moments of it, it touches people at that very core, which is so very hard to describe. That moment is a magical moment. That moment happens in the moment happens live at that meeting, direct meeting, meeting the artwork, hearing the music, seeing the performance. And this is where COVID has created an immense challenge in that when we can no longer physically touch or see or experience in that air that vibrates between the two it is much harder to make it vibrate online and it is not always the biggest art name that has succeeded that's that person is not the only bearer that is an important bearer no question about it but it's also important that we have it as part of our community with the artists that are around us because they experience the same reality that we, we live and i think what is very important to think about or to remember after this COVID time that the artists of our personal community carry a part of our soul and need that recognition, that support of the endless hours that they have spent to be able to get to the point that they can represent it and re and, and portray it within our community. Yeah, don't take it for granted.